So in this video, I'm going to explain how the player in this game can hide behind objects. So if I stand in front of this tree and press up on the keyboard, the player will hide behind it. Again, if I run to the other tree and press up on the keyboard, the player will again hide behind that tree. And this is one of those things that is a bit like a magic trick. So the magic trick, if you don't know how it works, seems like the most amazing thing ever. And then when you do find out how it works, it just seems really silly. And you think to yourself, how on earth did I ever fall for that? This is the exact same thing. And the hiding here and showing is so simple. Let me show you how. So here are the images that are used in this level. If you want to know how I created this kind of sprite atlas and squashed these sprites together, I have a video explaining how to do that in the description. Go ahead and click on that. But basically, the trees have two images used for them. They have the image that is when the player is not hiding behind them and an image when the player is hiding behind them. So here is the single tree unhidden. And when the player hides behind the tree, this sprite is replaced with that one. Similarly, this is a tree or the multiple trees. And when the player hides behind this tree, this sprite is replaced with that one. So essentially, when the player hides, the player sprite has an opacity of zero, so it disappears, and the, the tree sprite is replaced with a different sprite. So it is really simple, and I'm gonna show you the code that I used to get it to work. So now we're back in VS Code. These are the two tree sprites. You've got tree multi and tree single. This is tree multi, and this is tree single. you notice, that both of these sprites extend something called hideable object group. And this is a class that is a group of sprites. So here is the hideable object group. Let's go to the top. And that extends flexible sprite group. It has four sprites in it. So the visible sprites, the sprite that is shown when the player is not hiding behind the object and the hidden sprite, the sprite that's shown when the player is hiding behind the object. We have the hide prompt and the unhide prompt these are the purple boxes on top here. So hide and unhide. And those are the four sprites that are contained in this hideable object group. We also have the player passed in as an argument, but the player is already instantiated in the parent class. So as you can see here, this is the constructor and the player is passed in. So they're already instantiated, just passed in here for the class to know when the player is hidden or not. The player has different states that are controlled using state machine. And when the hidden state is triggered, then this class will know. Okay, so let's go down to the main function that takes care of it. And that's this sprite toggles function. Here you can see if the player is over a hideable object and the player presses the up key on the keyboard, this controls the layer here. I'll explain later, but this is a bit of a hack to, to make sure that the player button is registered. When, when the player is overlapping the object and they press up button on the keyboard, the player is hidden. So I run a function to hide the player. The visible sprite is hidden and the hidden sprite is shown. Similarly, if the player is hiding behind an object, so once this function runs, the state is changed to hidden. So if the player is hiding behind an object and the up button is pressed, then it's reversed. So the player is shown, the visible sprite is shown and the hidden sprite is hidden. And again, we have this timer for the control delay. So now let me explain what this is doing. If you look up here, we have the controls util, and this is, is a singleton that handles the game's controls. And because all the controls are handled by one singleton, when a button is pressed that can be used to do multiple things, we need to delay that triggering. If that triggering is not delayed, then it's not recognized. And the reason we delay that triggering, because if I press the up button once, the singleton will register that as going from false to true, as in it wasn't pressed and now it is pressed. And to press it again, well, it's already true. So it won't go to false. So if I go down here to show you this. So when I press the up button, singleton has registered that from false to true. And to press it again to, to unhide, it won't work because it's already true. Once this is changed in the singleton, I have a delay to, to change it again so that it can be changed once more. Now, if this is still confusing to you, I'm happy to make a separate video to show you why this works and why using a singleton for, for controls needs this hack in Hacksplexel to get it to work. 
but this is what I've been using and this is what has been working well for me. Okay, and that's pretty much it. This was a short video to explain how the hiding and the showing worked. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you'll notice that there's a huge gap between me making the last game devlog video and this one. And that's basically because I haven't had time to dedicate to working on this game. As much as I'd want to, the time hasn't been there. So I'd love to make more game devlog videos so that I can finish this game off, but it's based on time. So please bear with me. If you enjoyed this video, I make videos about game and web development every single Thursday. So please subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.